taxes, keeping my books straight, running a profit and loss statement, it all gets so confusing. I used to spend more time trying to worry about my taxes and if I'm doing them right than I actually did working on my business. I needed a solution. That is when I found Core Financial. Core is a team of tax professionals that actually care about real relationships with their clients. From the moment I hired Core, I was able to trust that I would be fully taken care of. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all the tax breaks I qualify for. Are you struggling to understand your finances? Do you need help making sure you don't make any mistakes? Look no further. Core Financial. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core Financial, and we know you will be too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com slash core to see what they can do for you. Core Financial. Real relationships. No surprises. Imagine going to your local mall, if it was open, and going into the food court and standing, standing on a table in the food court and just yelling, I shoot wedding videos! Hello and welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is Nick Miller and I am joined this week by John Bunn. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Uh, I took yesterday off, had a long week last week, getting prepared for a wedding next weekend. And so, yeah, I've been doing really well. I know that you're doing well, but you're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Where are you? I am not. I am not. So if I sound a little bit different or you're watching online and I look a little bit bit different, I'm recording from my mom's basement. I'm in Colorado (laughs) this week. Um, uh, Colorado this week. Is everything okay with you and Jen? Are you guys good? Yes, yes, yes. You're not just like Um, living in your mom's basement uh, anymore. (laughs) No, no. We have a wedding out here. Uh, tomorrow as of recording this the next day. So um, we kind of came out and spent, took the whole family up here with us, spending a little time with my parents before we shoot this wedding <clears throat> on Friday. And then we'll head back to good old really, really hot Kansas on Saturday. So um, nice. that's, well, that's what's going on with good us. good to see you in like natural light and not studio light. <laughs> it makes me want to go up in my window, but I'm not going to do that. But um, I'm, I'm excited that you're in Colorado because – here in Oklahoma and in Kansas, super hot right now, but I'm really excited about this topic. We've been wanting to do something. We've had different people on talking about this topic before, but we've never really dove into it ourselves. And that's the subject of advertising, um, paying to advertise, whether that's through Google or Facebook or Instagram Mm -hmm. or YouTube or, and so this episode today, we're going to, I know a lot of you are trying to, to generate more leads different things like that. So we wanted to break down just a couple of strategies we've done. Um, I posted in our Facebook group and just kind of gathered some information on what some of of you all are doing. And just wanted to have a conversation because I think, Nick, we talk about it a lot about this crockpot method, which is great and what you should be doing. And this is something that takes time and is a slow build. But at the same time, you can also be building by generating leads that you pay for. So that's kind of the the direction we're going to go today. Definitely. Definitely. And I think as as we talk about this subject, you know, there's an idea out there that, um, you know, ads don't work for me. And, you know, there's that the common thing to do is Facebook is asking you to just boost your your post. And so people like I boosted it and I got all these views on it, but I didn't get any leads and I didn't get anything. And so there's just this misconception out there. I think that a lot of people are like it. It doesn't work, especially with Facebook. It just it just doesn't work. And I want to ask you, listener, how many times have you done something one time and it didn't work out how you wanted to or it failed? Okay, and then like in your wedding video business, did you quit? Did you quit trying it? Did you quit experimenting it? Or were you just like, you know what? This didn't work this time. Let me reinvent it. Let me try it. And I think as it comes to ads, if we're applying this crockpot method to it, you know, time to take that slow, steady approach to it and kind of tweak it and, and do it over and over again. And eventually, after you know what you're doing and after you figure it out, you can really, really make some noise. You can really get some leads. You can really get those ads that you want. But people are impatient. Uh, we, we live in a world where we want results right now and we don't know what we're doing. And instead of trying to dive into it somewhat because it's a little confusing, 
We just do what Facebook tells us to do, and it's basically we're giving Zuckerberg free money. And so today we want to talk about you know how to get these ads. We're going to talk uh, a lot about Facebook because that's what John and I know. We're going to talk some about Google, but you know just getting those leads. And there are different couple, there are different kinds of leads that you can get. Right, John, why don't you talk about those two different, yeah. we learned this, you know, a couple weeks ago and, and I, it really has really stuck with us. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of books. Uh, Russell Brunson has a few books that I've been reading through and all the, though the guy's a little bit salesy for my, my technique, uh, he does have some really good points about, mm-hmm. you know, leads and, and traffic and getting traffic to your website. And there, you know, there are a couple of different ways you can get traffic. You can earn traffic. You know, these are leads that you earn, referrals, people finding you organically. They give you their information. Like that's a lead that you earn. That some, you know, you crockpot method. And then there's also leads that you can buy. These are advertisements, different, you know, ways. You know, reaching out to people, paying for posts, different things. Mm-hmm. Like any leads that you generate by spending money. You know, and these work together at the same time. Like my business now, I'm rarely buying any of these leads or advertising because I've spent so much time earning that, that it kind of the flywheel's turning and you don't need those paid ads as much. So, you know, we want to funnel them all into traffic that we own. And so that is, you know, email lists, you know, emails on our list and things like that, or people that have reached out to us, like getting their information into our system So we're not, we're not relying on continually having to earn new ads. And I know that as people are engaged and you know, that changes and all that stuff, like, Mm -hmm. but the point is these two can work together at the same time. Yeah, they, they definitely do work together. And the thing about the leads that you earn, this is what everyone is trying to do. This is the most common way to do it, but to get leads and to grow your business, this is absolutely the hardest one to get going and get that, you know, if you're pushing your boulder up the mountain, earning leads, having people find you organically, it's the hardest way because especially with the algorithms and especially with Facebook, Facebook really wants you to pay to play. And so can you get a really big following on your Instagram, on your Facebook uh, without paying? Yes, you can. You can get lucky and have that one viral video and then everyone's like, boom, I love this person. You know, I'm going to follow them or whatever. But it, it, it's really hard to do that. But whenever you, you know, dovetail that, whenever you hook that with buying leads and then you're working these two things together, it's, you know, they they really piggyback off of each other and they can really help each other um, so that you can really get all of this traffic that you own. So John, you, you said, you know, getting this traffic that you own, what is traffic that we own? What does that mean? Yes. Well, traffic that we own, you think about it, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of these different places, they're great um, to get, you know, followers. But like, what if, you know, Martin Zuckerberg, owner, CEO of Facebook says, ah, oh, we're just going to shut down. I'm good. Well, <laughs> you don't own those that following and the economy would probably shut down. But what I'm getting at is that like you want to get people into your database, into your Mm -hmm. email list. And you said something, Nick, you said buying leads and I said buying leads and I'm not talking, we're not talking about, Hey, let's pay for a list of emails or let's do something. But this is more, you know, what we're talking about followers. Not talking yeah, don't, about that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But like the things that we're talking about are to pay for ads on platforms that help people that are interested in your product, you know, come by and see what you're offering. I will say just real quickly, whenever I got going and Nick mentioned it, just like pushing that boulder up the mountain at the beginning is the hardest thing to do. Mm-hmm. And whenever I got going, um, 2007, there were, you know, it was a lot cheaper at that point to run ads on certain platforms. But you know, and we'll get into Google, we'll get into Facebook, but I spent a lot of money at the beginning just getting people to know that I existed by paying for Google ads and paying for Facebook ads. And so like, as I got going, I could pull that back and keep pulling it back until I didn't need it anymore. And so if you're new in your business and you hear us talking about building relationships and doing all these things, you know, like to, to put in the crock pot and slowly let it simmer, that's great. But like, you probably need to build your business now too. And Mm -hmm. so if you're paying to show up to people that are typing in wedding videography plus your city, or, you know, you're paying to show up in front of engaged couples on Facebook, this is only going to help you. And so we want to walk through kind of the two, you know, main platforms that we would recommend you using, and then some strategies, what we would be doing if we were doing paid ads right now, 
um, and mm-hmm. things like that. And so, Nick, the first one I want to talk about is Google. Um, whenever we think about Google, um, Google is where you go when you're actively looking for something. You know, you're looking for a sushi restaurant in your city. You're looking for, you know, a, a certain, I don't know, things like you're, you're physically going to, you know, to find something out. On Facebook, you're scrolling by and then something just is like, oh, that's something I didn't even think I needed. Let me see what that is. But on Google, this is where your buyer, I mean, this is where they're literally typing in mm-hmm. wedding videographer Tampa Bay, you know, and they're, <laughs> They're, ty- they're typing these, these things in or like wedding videographers in my area or and you start thinking mm-hmm. of all these things on Google, they're in the mode to buy. They're not randomly getting, you know, passed by with a billboard. This is I'm searching for this. And so Google is very, very important and they make it really easy with their AdSense and their ad platform to go on and bid for certain keywords. And so whenever I first got going, that's what I did. I thought of every single combination of wedding video, wedding videographer in Tulsa and Oklahoma and Oklahoma City um, to get my name out there. And, you know, I would pay anywhere at that point up to six or seven dollars per click. You know, you can bid and it'll show you how much you have to bid to show up on the first page. So if somebody types in wedding videographer Tulsa before all the organic search, my ad shows up at the top. And so that really fueled my business at the beginning. And for fun, I was like, let me just try a couple of areas around the country. And I, I started doing advertising in Southern California because I like traveling there. And what do you know, I've done, you know, I started getting weddings from there. Like you can set these based on regions. So you mm-hmm. could advertise in someone else's city and just like point them to your site and you can get all kinds of leads. So Google, um, was huge for us. And so if you're in your business and you're thinking, how can I, like, that's probably where I would first look at is Google where people are typing in, especially if you're, you know, really trying to get new leads. Nick, anything to add to that? Well, I I wanted to touch on the bidding idea with that, Mm -hmm. you know, just in case you're listening to this and you, what, what do you mean by bidding? Well, it's, it's kind of the exact same thing as gambling a little bit, you know, so you have these keywords that you want to search for and you want to rank for. And on Google, if you search anything in Google, it's those first few, like two or three or four that pop up that are in yellow. Those mean that they're in, in, they're an ad. People are paying for them to show up in that spot. Okay, so when you're bidding, you are basically saying, okay, this is how much this click is worth to me. Okay, so if you set it at seven dollars, then every time someone clicks on that yellow part that shows up at the top, okay, it's costing you seven dollars per click. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to hire you, they're going to book you or anything, but you are just paying them to get up in front. So you have to decide what's what's worth it for me and my business okay if if you're especially in a very saturated city and you're just getting started you're probably going to have to pay a lot more to show up on that that first page those first two or three you know um ad ad revenue you know spots so just so you keep that in track and then um you know you can cap the amount that you're going to spend so after you you know eat through that money it'll stop showing your ads and that sort of stuff but again it's it's all kind of you have to learn and you have to figure it out and you have to know where you want to be. Um, but at the very beginning, if you're just starting out, that is a great, a great way to get going with, um, you know, ads on Google. Yeah. And on Google, you know, they will show you analytics and they will show you a uh, estimated cost to show up on the first page. Mm-hmm, they, mm-hmm. You know, the, the platform itself is ridiculously intuitive. And I haven't been, you know, advertising with Google in a couple of years now, but, um, you know, just with some simple, like looking through on Google, you would be able to very easily put together some things. And, you know, we're not going to get into a ton of the ad strategy for Google, but, you know, you're wanting to create copy that makes people want to click over to you. Is it just an advertisement saying, you know, Redeems Productions, Tulsa, Oklahoma, wedding videography. Does it take them to my contact page? Does it take them to my about page? Does it take them to a specific video? Mm -hmm. You can create ads for every single venue in your town. Like you can get really specific with it. Mm -hmm. Mayo Hotel is a big wedding venue here in my town. And so like if if I was doing Google ads again, I would say Mayo Hotel wedding 
uh, like if, if somebody typed that in, I want to show up first as the video and I would link it to my favorite video at the Mayo Hotel. Mm -hmm. So that like gets people into, and I remember, you know, I would set somewhere between a two and $400 a month budget whenever I was doing the ads. And so if I could get one person to book me in $400, I would see an amazing ROI or return on investment. Right. And so that can really get that ball rolling. But we wouldn't recommend that you push to that if your website isn't ready yet. And that's why mm -hmm. these episodes leading up to this episode, we've been talking about your branding and getting all that right. And so this all works together. And if you have that all together and then you start running these ads, people are going to start showing up. And then at that point, what do you do with them? What journey do yeah. you take them on? So. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll get into that kind of that journey that you want to take them to here, here in a little, in a minute. But the other big platform that John and I are way more familiar with than Google is going to be the Facebook ad platform. And on the planet, Facebook is probably the best ad platform out there. Um, and I know right now that a bunch of big corporations and stuff are like pulling their money out because, you know, they, they don't like, um, the fake news articles and like the stuff that it's pushing. But we see that as smaller businesses. Oh, um, here's these big businesses that are pulling out. So that just makes our cost per ad go down. At least that's right now as the time that we're recording this, but it is the most robust. You can target so much stuff. You can go in there and, and you know, figure out likes. And if you know who your ideal client is, if you know their avatar, meaning um, how old are they? Where do they live? Where do they shop? Uh, what do they like? What stores do they go to? Well, I said, where do they shop? That's the same thing. You know, if you know all of that stuff, you can get really detailed and targeted as, you know, you're going through this whole process. And then you can push those ads to both Facebook and Instagram, um, you know, they're huge. And so we we have had a lot of success in growing our How to Film Weddings and our other podcast, How to Make a Podcast. We've had real big success in using Facebook ads and getting information in front of people so that we are then able to grow our email list and get in front of them and have them listen to our content and all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, John, what do you have to add about um, so you, Facebook? You, you mentioned, you know, the the idea that we've grown both of our podcasts with Facebook ads. And I will lay out two scenarios for you. For How to Film Weddings, we didn't pay for a single ad until January, I think, of this year, of 2020. And we started in October. It was close. It was, it, it was at yeah, least a year yeah, it in. Was, like, yeah, we were, we did, we we were November, December of okay. 19 at Getting the ready earliest, for, but definitely yeah. 20, for our course launch, yeah. Yeah, getting ready for our complete wedding videography course, we started running ads to show up to wedding videographers. But before that, we just gave really good content and we kept promoting and we kept earning our way into some of your inboxes or you joined our Facebook group. Or, and so like that took a long time. Mm -hmm. And so we've recently just started a new brand called How to Make a Podcast, which Nick was referring to. And we really weren't going to start that until after next year. But with being in quarantine and caught up on all of our edits, we were like, let's go for it. And so we brought in and had someone help us set up some Facebook ads and target people that are interested in podcasting. And within seven weeks, we have several thousand people in that Facebook group. We've had to pay thousands of dollars, but like we were able to target specific people with certain mm -hmm. ads and get them into our group. We were able to launch a course last week about podcasting. It's been great. It's been successful. And so that was like a three month period of time as opposed to like an 18 month period of time. And so meanwhile, we are building and, you know, earning leads, but we're buying a lot with how to make a podcast, but how to film weddings. We've really only advertised during our course launch because we wanted more people that are interested in our course to potentially find it. So yeah. there's a couple different things. And then with Facebook itself, if you're a back to like the wedding videography side of things, if you're mm -hmm. in Boise, Idaho and you are a wedding videographer, shout out to Boise. Um, if you're in Boise, Idaho and you're a wedding videographer, you know, you can run ads to show up to people that are engaged that live within 25 miles of Boise that are also interested in certain types of things, different kinds of wedding publications or channels on TV or and you can really go into the platform. It's kind of creepy and you can go in and target certain people based on certain things. And so with Facebook it's not necessarily people searching for wedding videographers, but it's people that really probably could use your product. And so mm -hmm. what Facebook does and what's really cool about this 
and we want to just talk just a second about like this Facebook pixel. If you if you put this into your website, it's a little piece of code that if it's in your website, it lets Facebook know if somebody clicked on your ad. It let you know it's there's a lot of data out there. I don't want to go super deep into that, Nick. Although we could, but what happens is if somebody clicks your ad, it knows that you click the ad. And so if you've shown mm-hmm. them an ad and they've clicked it, you have a, a bucket of data of people that saw an ad and clicked it. So they would be a warmer audience that would be more mm-hmm. interested in purchasing your product. And so we'll get into that in a little bit. But um, the, the idea of Facebook being kind of like a billboard that you drive by and see, and then the other would be like a phone book that you're going to with Google saying, I'm looking for this type of thing. These all work together and they can really yeah. help each other out. So, yeah. And as we're yeah. talking about <clears throat> the ad platforms and Google and Facebook, you know, you need to figure out, you know, what's what's your purpose in running these ads? You know, is it something like awareness? You just want people to know you exist. Is, do you want to get leads on your website? Do you want to get on the phone call? Whenever you get that stuff figured out, then you can determine your bidding strategy. You can figure out how much money you want to sink into it. You can figure out, you know, the funnel that you want them to go to. And we're going to touch base on all of those different things right after this break. Do you remember that wedding from a month ago? (laughs) Yeah, like that one that you needed to start editing yesterday? But you also need to prep today for your wedding tomorrow and you're leaving for your first vacation in forever on Monday. So what do you do? It seems that the only creative part of your edits are the excuses you're going to have to give your clients. We have the solution, Weditor. Weditor is a team of top wedding editors, project managers, and account coordinators that help us wedding filmmakers edit. They match the right editors with your style so you can spend your time where it matters most, on your business. Nick and I both use Weditor and we don't know how we would run our companies without them. It takes a team to build an amazing business and you shouldn't try to do it all on your own. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor to help you free up your time so that you can focus on growing your brand. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And we're back from break. We're going to start off with our question of the day presented by Weditor. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And John, here's our question. How much should I budget for ads if I am just starting out? That is a really good question. I like that question a lot. I think. Um, well, you did write it, so. Well, you're yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> so, how much I should budget if I'm just starting out? I think this is going to depend on a lot of things. I would say to slowly scale it up. Maybe mm-hmm. start with a few dollars a day. Like, I mean, three dollars a day is ninety dollars a month. You know, I mean, so it it can add up really quickly, um, yes. and we can you know, talk about where you should do these ads and stuff. Um, but it's going to come down to what your strategy is. Do you already have weddings booked? Do you need more weddings booked? Do you have no awareness at all? Is your website ready? But how much I should budget for ads if I'm just starting out, I would start smaller, a couple dollars a day and keep growing that until it makes no more sense to spend more. What, what, what's kind of the advertising you know, isn't the advertising, um, you know, rule of thumb, 10% of your revenue should go back into advertising. Isn't it, isn't it about 10? I don't know. I don't know exactly, but I would, I would assume that's probably a good, a good okay. kind of ballpark. So, and it's so different with each wedding video oh, business, but definitely. I'm sure there's, there's definitely. articles and science out there that I just don't know. My, my, yeah, my, my thought would, would be, would, if, you know, if you're just starting out and you want to get going, you know, maybe start in 10% might be a little high. You know, if you're charging a thousand dollars, 10% is a hundred bucks. You know, that's, that's a, not a lot of money, but considering you only made a thousand, it, it kind of is. So we would, like John was saying, I would figure out percentage wise, every time I get a cash check in the mail, I am taking a certain percentage with that. And we would recommend starting smaller. And then as you kind of figure it out, grow and grow and grow. So maybe mm-hmm. start it at 3% or four percent do that for a few weddings whenever you get money in and then raise it to five or six and then you know with the idea of maybe getting it to ten um you know especially whenever you're getting you're making more money per wedding and if you're doing this right and you have everything set up right or correct um you're going to make more money by spending more money you know Mm -hmm. your return you know that that's where that phrase comes from is because i'm spending um you know three hundred dollars a month on ads but with 
all the weddings I'm booking, I'm now booking $15,000 in wedding a month. So it's totally worth it. You know, yeah. something like that. And so that's, that's kind of like the, the whole taking it a day at a time. And I would mm-hmm. look and say something like, okay, this month I'm going to budget a hundred dollars and just start there and say, let's yeah. see what we can do with a hundred dollars. You might not book anything. Um, but if you say, Hey, over three months, I'm going to spend $300. And then you look back after 90 days and you're, you're, you know, at that time you've been in the ad platform for several, you know, several months, you know, about how to read the data, you know, all this stuff that was scary at the beginning. Now you kind of know all the data and you're mm-hmm. like, okay, $300 got me this many leads, got me yes. this many phone calls. And I booked this many things. And you can really start mm-hmm. to look at your data and say, huh, I had six phone calls and I booked none of them. Maybe there's something wrong in my booking process. Or Mm -hmm. I had six phone calls and I booked all six of them. Maybe I need to raise my prices a little bit or maybe. Mm -hmm. And so you can really start to get strategic based on this. And so like if you put $100 in in the first month and you get 14 people to book you, you might say, you know what? I might put $200 in or I might raise my prices or I might, you know, yeah. like it's it's different if you spend $100 and you didn't do anything, you know, no bookings at all. It's like, man, I need to really learn this ad platform better. I feel like I'm wasting my money. But when it comes down to it, it's a net net game. And so like you might lose $100 in the first month, but that $100 was your education getting you to the next month of $100. And you can't just throw money at it and say, oh, I'll put $100 in randomly. If it works, it works. If not, it's Facebook's fault. It's Google's fault. You know, you put your $100 in there and you start like looking through, oh, this ad copy doesn't look as good. Oh, this landing page they're going to doesn't have a call to action. Oh, and you can really yeah. dive deep into that and say, oh, OK, this $100 or this $300 over three months yielded me, you know, 20 leads. I booked six of them. That was $24,000 for 300 Dollars. That's a great return on the investment. And that might be all you need, or you might have booked nothing. And, you know, so there's just a lot of strategy that goes on that. So, yeah, 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 definitely. And whenever it comes to, I think the biggest problem that I see whenever I look at Facebook ads (laughs) and I hear people talking about them, right, is people are like, hey, I just finished this film. I'm going to show it to the world. And then, you know, book today, like that's the call to action button or book me now or, you know, something like <laughs> that. And the thing that John and I talk about, um, you know, Gary V talks about a whole lot is, you know, don't try and score on the first date. And so if someone has no clue who you are, but maybe they just got engaged. But, you know, typically wedding video isn't I, I love that it's starting to become one of the first, you know, two or three or four Um you know, uh, vendors that are being hired. But a lot of times, you know, we're five, six, eight months into the process before people really start looking for wedding video. And so if they don't know you exist and they might be engaged, you're like, you're like, book me now. Like that's that that maybe that's why you're not getting as much return on your ad that because you're not doing it right. You're not, you're not warming them up. You're not saying the right things. And so you need to figure out, you know, what is your goal with your ads? Okay. We talked about something like awareness. All we need to do is let people know that you exist and constantly show up to them and say, Hey, I'm a wedding video person and I do this and I make really beautiful stuff. And you're not like asking them to buy maybe for the first one or two ads unless they see that and then go exploring on your website and want to. You're giving them helpful information. Yeah, John? Imagine going to your local mall, if it was open, and going into the food court and standing standing on a table in the food court and just yelling, I shoot wedding videos. I'm a wedding videographer. Hire me. Like Mm -hmm. People would look at you and just be like, who is this? crazy person what are they doing i shoot 4k 120 (laughs) like all this stuff that's like i don't that person needs to go to a hospital (laughs) somebody help exactly that is the same thing that most of you all or most people try doing when they just run ads to a cold audience without really thinking about the strategy they're yelling at a huge group of people that you don't care they don't care to hear your message And, you know, if you're listening to this and you're not in the marketing world or advertising world and we keep using some of these words like um, cold leads, what a cold lead is and it's simple as form is someone that does not know that you exist. And so they see an ad and you're they're cold. So you have to do a lot more 
to get them to earn your trust, to get them so that they want to purchase your product, they want to purchase your services. And so that's why we're talking about just being aware, having them, you know, uh, see your stuff and get excited about your stuff so that whenever they are ready to buy, they are very hot and they are very warm and they are ready for that. So um, as we're talking about you know, Facebook stuff, right? People are like standing in the middle of a, of a cafeteria saying, hire me, hire me, hire me. And we're like, no, that's not the way to go about it. And that's probably a reason why a lot of people say the ads just don't work for me. They, they don't work. It's because you're going about it all wrong. So it, let, let's just focus in on the awareness because I think that that's where a lot of our, maybe our problems exist is we're just not aware, people aren't aware of us. So maybe let's talk through a few different ways where people could um, maybe build some funnels or something like that. And John, if you wanna explain real quick what a funnel is so that we can get them into our system so that they are become warmer and warmer and more ready to buy us whenever they are ready to do so. Yes. And, you know, this all, I hope this is like turning, you know, wheels in your head saying, oh, how can I show up to people differently than just yelling at them um, in the middle of, you know, the cafeteria or the food court or whatever. You know, for me, if I were in a spot where I was wanting to run ads, you know, Nick's talking about cold leads versus warm leads. We say it a lot, but you have to warm up certain people in your audience. Mm -hmm. And part of that is kind is getting like repelling people that, aren't somebody that would use or, or work with you. And so, you know, if you're running an ad to all of the engaged people in your city, that is a big number of people. Um, that is, you know, and if you're thinking about like Nick's talking about funnels, you guys have probably heard about funnels, but like this big number at the top is just like people in your area and you can funnel that down to engaged people and you can run an ad and we can talk some strategy here in a second, but just on the breaking down of the funnel, you know, when they first hear about you, some of them will be interested. <clears throat> some won't be interested. The people that are interested by using something like the Facebook pixel um, and might click your ad or might watch a certain percentage of your video, those people can funnel down to a smaller number of people that are more interested. They're more likely to buy than somebody that just slid past your ad. And then mm -hmm. maybe there's a call to action for them to do something, download a free guide or a thing or click here to learn some tips on your wedding day. Like if they've clicked and it, it kind of funnels them all down till there's a smaller number of people that at the very bottom, hopefully if you've advertised to a hundred thousand engaged people, the bottom there's 10 to 50 of them that would be interested in buying something from you. And so it funnels down and there's strategy that goes into getting them mm -hmm. to actually purchase from you. And so Nick, there's a few ways that I know that I would do like some options of funneling people into a position to want to purchase with me. Um, the first one, you know, education. If you think about it, if, if you get an ad that just says like book me or I'm a wedding videographer, that's great. If someone's looking for a wedding videographer specifically, that's awesome. That's where I mm -hmm. recommend Google. But like if I'm engaged and I get an ad that's something that would help me as a bride or a groom mm -hmm. educating me, especially something specific for your city. Nick, if if you're, you know, in your city, there was a top 10 barn venues in Wichita or top five barn venues or, you know, the the best Catholic ceremony locations or like you can get really specific and educate them with information, you know, that might be attractive to them to click without them even really realizing that you're a wedding videographer. It might just be something helpful, ways to save mm -hmm. time on your wedding day. There's yes. so many different things education-wise. Does anything else come to your mind, education? Well, I think that we, if, if you've been in this industry for, you know, six months even, you know something that your couples don't. Okay, you know something, think think of it this way, you know, most people when they get married, it's their first time to do it whenever they're contacting you. So you know a lot more information. You have an expertise that they don't have, okay? There's this Zig Ziglar quote, right, John, that says, um, if I give, you know, if you give people what they want, you will eventually get what you want, 
right? I might have paraphrased that a little bit, but that's well, basically close. the idea. That's close to close, close, close. And so uh, the idea is if you're giving them a lot of helpful information, if you're saying, here are these venues that fit this category that I know that you're looking at, or here are, you know, some other, you know, some photographers or some florists or um, planners that we love working with that are amazing that you have to hire. As you start recommending these people and they found you find you as this vault of information that can is very, very helpful whenever that idea of, oh, I really want a wedding video, but they remember the three blog posts that you wrote that were targeted. And so you weren't asking them to buy you in those ads. You were just sharing information, but now they're coming back to you to find you so that um, they can hire you. And that's kind of a great, a great position to be in. And if you're running, you know, these educational type ads where it's like there's the, you think of a bride standing in line at Starbucks, kind of like mm-hmm. scrolling through, oh, 10 venues that are, you know, ballroom weddings in Tulsa, great ways to save time on your wedding day or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. If they click that, they're not just clicking it and staying in Facebook. At that point, they're moving from there to wherever you send them and you can send mm-hmm. them to a specific page on your website. And if you're showing off the, the top five venues in your town for barns or whatever, you know, there's a million different strategies. But what if those the way you showed them off is showed videos that you've done there or videos that you've made or interviews that you've done? Or so if I say five ballroom wedding ideas for Tulsa weddings to Tulsa brides, that's going to weed out a lot of people that aren't interested in bar or that aren't interested in ballroom weddings. Exactly. But when they click over, they might see three of my most recent ballroom weddings and they're like, whoa, Mm -hmm. this is this video is great. And that could immediately push them into wanting to book you or it could push them into like remembering you or, you know, and so that's a great way to use education and being able to point them back to your site. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing that, um, you know, when it comes to some of these options, when when running Facebook ads, there's nothing wrong with doing an ad that is more based on book me now, or I only have a certain amount of space left. If a bride gets an uh, an ad showing, you know, you maybe posted one of your recent videos and the copy said something like 2021 is almost booked up. Wedding videography is the number one things that couple regret couples regret not having click here to see redeemed productions calendar today before it's too late running a 10% mm-hmm. special mention this like you can go more sales side of it and just push straight for the sale. And yes. there's nothing wrong with that. I would mix yeah. up a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the last one, which is going to just be brand awareness. And this is going to be, you know, just getting your face, getting your product just in front of people. And, you know, maybe it's your video, maybe it's a blog post that you wrote, but the idea here with running these kind of ads is just to keep you in the forefront of their mind whenever they are looking to hire your services. So if you're, you know, talk about what what makes your brand unique, you know, what, what makes you guys special? And maybe these are more personal posts. Maybe these are more things that are, you know, talk about, you know, Nick Miller and talk about Jen Miller and what we like to do and where we like to go. And, and, and we bring all of this stuff that we like into our film business and it helps us create a unique product. You know, just that brand awareness, all of these things as an ad can really elevate you so that people like want you there. It's like, it, it's not that they just, you know, they have to have you there. And if you do all this stuff right, man, the paid, if you set it up right, the paid ads through Facebook and Google, and Google are just huge, can be huge for your business. And if you think about it, if somebody clicks one of these ads that, you know, you're creating, if you've installed your pixel correctly on Facebook or, um, you know, like you can see that they've clicked you and clicked on mm-hmm. your website. And what that allows you to do is run retargeting ads. And so you can see if people are clicking those people that, you know, you you showed up to this big audience at the top of the funnel and then some of the people clicked it. Those people that clicked it, you can show another ad. So maybe they 
initially clicked saying they they're interested in ballroom weddings and want to learn how you know learn more about that if you know that you could then probably show them an ad like nick is saying that's a brand awareness or about me or you know here's john like a photo of me with a camera saying why i love wedding videography or Mm -hmm. and so you can build a strategy and that's the fun part because it's different for every single um, company out there. And I want to go through some of these strategies um, and, and kind of walk through a few of these options. And we're going to do that right after this break. Are you tired of just sending a link to your couples when you are done with their film? Do you want to deliver something they can actually see and feel? We are so excited to tell you about Photo Flash Drive. Photo Flash Drive's Playbook Video Player is a game changer for you and your clients. Live memories in storybook form. Take your delivery experience to the next level with your couples. Photo Flash Drive's storybook is packed with features. A customizable cover, beautiful video quality, easy drag and drop file load and up to 32 gigabytes in storage. Not only that, you can upload multiple videos to your player so the couple can watch all of their videos in one place. Watch your couple's jaws drop as they open the book and are able to relive the day. The video playbook is a great way to sell additional items to your couple, a great way to offer the full branding experience, and a great way to leave an impression. And do we have a deal for you? Use promo code HTFW30 for 30% off all playbook video players. Just head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash photo flash drive to see all of the details. We know the time suck that is searching for the perfect song for your wedding film. Musicbed has spent years collaborating with artists, bands, and composers to make it easier than ever for anyone to find the right song for their video. With amazing artists like Chapters, Tony Anderson, and The Light, The Heat, Musicbed is the best place for wedding videographers to get licensed music. Their subscription service was a life changer for me, especially since all of their subscription music is pre-cleared for every social media platform Facebook, Instagram, Love Stories TV, and my personal favorite, YouTube, all pre-cleared. And if you are interested in a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. When you sign up, use the promo code HTFW and you will get your first month for free. And we are back from break. We've been talking all things advertising strategy with Facebook and Google, what to you know be paying a day, all that kind of stuff. And in this portion mm-hmm. of the episode, we're really excited to break down some strategy thoughts um, on sure. what you should be doing when running these ads. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, when, when thinking about strategy, it's different than just boosting a post where I think a lot of people, like we have mentioned, just think that boosting a post is going to get them, you know, all this awareness and this big following and things like that. And we've said it before a hundred times on this podcast. We do not care about numbers for numbers sake. We want people to follow us and find our information relevant because they want to book us. I'd rather have a hundred followers on Instagram than a hundred million if the hundred are the ones that would buy. And so, you know, strategy, I can't stress enough. You have to look at your business. You have to look at a lot of things. And first of all, like there's no one size that fits all with your with your strategy. You have to be able to look and be self-aware with your branding. We don't necessarily recommend that you push a ton of money until you have at least a pretty solid brand, a pretty solid look. Um, it's kind of this catch-22. It's like you don't get more weddings until you, you know, have more booked and you don't have any more booked until you advertise. And so it's kind of, you know, mm-hmm. so when building out the strategy, you have to be self-aware. That's the first thing of your brand is yes. what your, your, your branding, is that going to attract people or are you just going to be throwing money away? So the first thing we mm-hmm. say, Nick, is to look at your website, look at your design, look at you know, the way that it feels. Is your about page correct? Is it easy for them to, to reach out to you? Does it make mm-hmm. sense? Do you have calls to action on your website to make it easy for people? And if not, we don't recommend people uh, you know, start running any of these kinds of paid ads. Yeah. Yeah. You need to, what was it? Christine Rome said that like your website shouldn't look like it, it was made by a plumber or a yeah. plumber's <laughs> website or something, you know, something like, but, but that's the idea. If you're going to run these ads and you want people to be there and show up and buy your services, you need to be put together, right? You mm-hmm. need, you need to look a certain way. And then, you know, I think there's a, a, a problem that a lot of businesses have is the way that they talk about their business and how they present themselves is totally different 
maybe maybe we're talking about Instagram or right how they present present themselves on Instagram is so you know let's say adventure dark and moody boho or whatever and then you go to their website and it feels very generic wedding okay and so you just need to make sure that everything is very cohesive because whenever you send someone there guess what they're going to look at your website and then they're going to go to your Instagram and then they might go to your Facebook or your YouTube or any anywhere that you are just to make see that ever make sure and see that everything fits together so you need to have your branding I, i'm not going to say it needs to be perfect because mm -mm. you know it doesn't need to be perfect but you need to have spent some time on it and think about it and kind of go through that process whenever you're doing that another thing that you need to be thinking of as you start running ads is where are you sending them OK, what mm -hmm. are you doing? Um, Max, whenever he was on, he said that, uh, you know, one of the biggest problems is that you say, hey, buy my services and then you click a link and it takes them straight to your homepage. And so now mm -hmm. they get to their homepage and they're like, where do I go? What I think he equated it to, you know, you going to the doctor's office and you go back in the waiting room and then you walk into a field and there's all these doctors just sitting around and you're like, I mm -hmm. I. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Okay, so whenever you think about running these campaigns and running these ads, you need to be very purposeful in sending them to the right place. If you want them to have a phone call with you, send them to your connect or your contact page or send them to a page that says, I want to talk to you. Here's my phone number. Call me or fill out this form. Okay, if you're talking about you know, wedding venues and you're like, oh, you like the, the Hudson in downtown Wichita, this really great urban space. If that's the one that you like, like don't just send them to your homepage because when they get to their homepage, then they have to look for that thing that caught their eye and gave them the reason to contact you, um, you know, to begin with. So you need to be purposeful in thinking about that stuff as well. Yeah, the strategy is so very important. And so, you know, if we're laying out just a couple of options and strategies, mm -hmm. if I'm you, I would be spending somewhere around 75% of my budget, whatever that is, on getting people into your system, like getting people to know that you exist, to, to download a thing, to come to your site, whatever. And then another 25% to kind of retarget people that have clicked certain things. And so this is within Facebook and Instagram is what I'm talking about. And so if you're spending $100, maybe setting up $75 worth of ads and $25 worth of retargeting ads. And so the way that would look, well, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I, I wanted to touch on on the retargeting thing. Maybe you were going to do that, but I'm going to steal it from you. Go um, for it. How, how the retargeting works is let's say you have this ad that's all about, you know, vi venues that you have shot at that you love in your city. And then someone clicks on that ad and let's say one in four people who see that. So 25% of the people that see that ad actually click on it, which as you're looking at a funnel, okay, it's called a funnel because it's wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. And so each layer that you go down, it's going to get less and less people, but the people at the bottom are the ones that you want you know, to book you. So you say one in four people um, click on this, this ad that you have that's about venues in their specific city. And then let's say you you can then with pixels, OK, with Facebook pixels saying if a person has visited this specific site and you put in the URL of that page, if they have visited this specific site, now I want them to see this ad. And then this ad, maybe you talk about, um, you know, uh, photographers in town that you love to work with or you talk about, um, you know, planners that are amazing to work with or you just, you know, some wedding day advice, you know, whatever is you kind of break it out and then you can continue to retarget and retarget and retarget. So if someone has visited a site on your page, then they will see this next ad. So it's, you know, it's like, um, you know, here's step one. And whenever step one is completed, then step two automatically automatically activates. And then when step two happens, then, auto then three automatically, uh, you know, updates and, and all of that. So you kind of taking them up these stairs or down the funnel, however you want to think of it like that. But retargeting is so huge because the retargeting ads, you know, you're starting with cold. And then when you retarget them, they're a little bit warmer and then you retarget it again, they're a little bit warmer and then they're con you're continuing down this funnel to get them to be the hot lead so that they're ready to book with you. Yeah, and you didn't steal what I was gonna say, that was a good point. I, I think <laughs> that one thing just to make sure people are understanding is that you can create specific URLs on your website, you know, redeemedproductions.com slash Mayo Hotel ad, you know, something like that where if the only way people can get to that page would be if they've clicked your ad on Facebook. And so, yes, Nick. 
Well, I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. You go ahead. I'll, 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 you go through. I'll, I'll finish when you're done. I'll say when you're done. That's funny. If you're just listening, Nick throws a hand up when he has something to add, and he, he, well, you I can't too. focus. I know we both do it, but <clears throat> it's hard for me to focus. So the point being is, if I had that URL, only place people could find it would be if they've clicked the ad, and that tells the pixel like anybody that's been to this page has clicked an ad, and then you can put those people in a bucket and say, I only want the people that have been to this page to be served this about me ad mm-hmm. or this. And so if they've clicked that ad, you can send them to another page. But another way of doing that is if they've just come to your page without being an ad that you paid for on Facebook, if if somebody has been to a specific blog page of mine, you can you can tag people based on where they've been within your site. So if people have been to a a blog of mine or a page of mine or a recent wedding video link of mine, which is, you know, if they've watched this first video on my site, which is my wedding from Italy. It's like, if they've been to that site, they can go into a bucket and I can show them ads of other destination weddings that I've done. I can Mm -hmm. show them and you can get really strategic and geek out pretty, pretty hard on getting like these people that have been to your site to continue down that path, man, my throat today continue down that that path to, mm-hmm. to booking you go ahead yeah yeah you you, you kind of said what i was going to say you know um <laughs> the <laughs> I, I just get so excited and 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 we're I don't, I don't know but yeah the 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 two you know making a specific url on your page or just writing blog posts and then sending people to the blog post and if you know that that's another thing that's powerful if you have the pixel you know installed on your website is someone is just reading through your stuff and they happen upon it but maybe they weren't in your targeting system. Now you can make them a part of your targeting system, which is mm-hmm. is really cool because those those are warmer leads, you know, to be to begin moving forward. So um, yeah. the ad ad stuff can be huge for your business. Again, you just have to figure out what your goal is and how much you want to spend, you know, in your in your business for your ads. Yeah, and so you know, continuing on the Facebook strategy, and then I want to also hit back on Google again. Um, there are all kinds of different platforms to advertise on, and we're not saying that you know this is just the kind of the tip of the iceberg with this conversation. But if you're running, you know, if I'm running an ad <clears throat> and I'm showing up to people, retargeting them, retargeting mm-hmm. them again, like they're going to get to this position where you know you can send them a, an advertisement that says, "Hey, do you you know like." we're doing a special right now. Do you, are you ready to book or you want, like you can start pushing people, showing them more of your films because people will jump to a warm lead, a really hot lead in different places within your funnel. Mm -hmm. They might see one video of yours and go straight to checkout and say, I want to, I want this. I need this. I didn't realize I needed this. Um, and so like, this is all funneling people to, you know, a different strategy for each company, but you're bringing in leads, you're bringing in people that are engaged, you're continually showing up to them. And that, you know, if you haven't thought through your website, you haven't thought through all these things, you might be like, well, Facebook ads don't work. And that Mm -hmm. is probably not the case at all. And so, um, you know, there are tons of courses on Facebook ads. Max Sadek has a group, you know, Facebook uh, marketing for wedding pros that we recommend. But the, the thing is, is getting under the hood and starting to like really see the ad platform and starting to learn that or even paying somebody to help yeah. you with Facebook ads. And so depending on, you you know, if you're newer or if you have a little bit extra money to spend, like that is a, you know, a great investment in finding somebody that you trust to help you with Facebook ads. And we've done that with our Facebook ads and I'm learning while I'm paying somebody to show us how to do them and stuff like that. And so mm-hmm. um, anything else on Facebook before I kind of talk about Google one more time? <clears throat> Nope. Nope. You're, you're doing it. You're getting it. It's good. (laughs) All right. Good. Hope this is helpful to people out there. But you know, if, (sighs) if I'm only spending money anywhere, it it might be, you know, if I only have 50 bucks a month to spend, I would probably start with Google. I would start with, you know, people that are actively searching terms that you want to show up for. Mm -hmm. And if, if you get specific in your town, if you think about it, a lot of people aren't advertising for specific venues in your town, um, specific planners in your town, photographers. Like you can show up if someone types in 
a different videographer's name even like you can, mm-hmm. you know, but most people, if you put yourself in their shoes, you know, like it, to be funny, I could, you know, say I could advertise in Wichita and, and say, you know, anytime anybody types in wild oak films, redeemed production shows up or whatever, but like you can target specific words and get, see which ones are doing really well and start spending more money on ones that are causing clicks to come to your website. And, and so like, if I would, if I was running ads right now, I would, pretty much be sure that if somebody if i typed in southern hills country club wedding video or southern hills country club wedding that nobody's paying for an ad for that but for a buck or less or a nickel or like i could probably show up in those places and that's a great great investment so you can look up and see which key terms you could really show up and start like monitoring that and then maybe um, mm-hmm. you know, if you need more bookings and need more, you could then add Facebook ads and stuff. And where Nick and I are at now, you know, neither of us are spending money on new ads because our referrals are referring more referrals. So, yep. Yep. So man, yep. we hope that all this has been, has been really helpful. I don't, I don't know if you guys can hear it if my mic is picking up, but my mom's dog is barking upstairs. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really cool. This is like college Nick. Normal setting. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, we hope that this uh, this has been really helpful for you. Whenever we're talking about ads and how to use them, and you know, um, if if you have any questions or whatever, you know, put it in our Facebook group, um, Facebook dot You know, uh, comment in there and ask us. You know, any questions, and we'll be happy to you know maybe share some more uh, thoughts or ideas if you have specific questions there. We want you to head over to howtofilmweddings.com. There you can find all of our goodies in our shop. Uh, One of those things is our posing guide. Our posing guide is, you know, 20 something poses that John and I use every single wedding day. We know that, uh, you know, some of you, I'm shooting my fourth wedding tomorrow, my fourth of 2020. And so, you know, I know there's rust and stuff and maybe you just need a little um, pick me up to remember how to, you know, shoot. Uh, This posing guide might be a great thing for you to pick up. John, it has been great spending some time with you and talking to you today. Until next time, we'll see ya. See ya.